So this week, I decided to do something a little bit different in lieu of my regular video. There has been another project that I've been working on recently, and it's a podcast, because I know you guys want more. Mike text it out, which is actually not going to be on this channel. But I thought since the first episode just went up yesterday, I'm going to give you a preview of the podcast. And then if you're interested in watching the whole thing, you can head over to the YouTube page for DMMR. We're also on Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, if not, I'll put it in the description. From my previous experience of having a podcast through iTunes, they're usually pretty fast. But this is basically where me and my friend Dijon, we kind of talk about art and technology. So Dijon is an author, he's written two books. He's also an actor, director, and like 10,000 other things. And you know me, I'm just all about technology. Like I love technology. I went to school for tech, never finished. Also, I've been doing tech support for like the last six years, which ironically I hate, but I love doing this with you guys. And that's why I'm here. So we kind of talk about the intersection between art and technology and how they're kind of necessary for each other. And then also we just talk about you know, whatever, video games, whatever comes to our mind. But I'm gonna shut up now and let you enjoy this quick look at our new podcast, DMMR. Welcome to DMMR. This is a podcast about movies, technology, acting, directing, all sorts of things. Well, that call it, kind of falls into the movies. It's not about, we're not talking about movies like watching movies, but more so the creation of movies. We're talking about writing, writing books, all things that Dijon has done. <laughs> yeah that's definitely not true um we're also going to be here to talk about incredibly interesting things like technology and computers and you know some of the complications that people run across with technologies like we ran across with getting this podcast set up and um <clears throat> we're also going to be covering video games because i have a favorite company their name is nintendo nintendo i remember them they made the wii u one of their most popular uh, gaming systems of all time. So we don't have to throw shade at the best video game company in the world. Yes, they did make the Wii U, but they also made the Switch. The Wii U was, it was experimental. Um, the way I saw the Wii U was that, you know, they wanted to see if the idea of the Switch was really going to work, right? And so they were like, well, we can like try it out with the Wii U to kind of get like a feel of what using this technology is like. And, you know, some of the support didn't quite come through the way Nintendo would have anticipated it or liked it to. However, I personally loved my Wii U. I thought it was a great system. Um, Honestly, the Wii U is a great system. Like if you can get one, you know, for like $100, the game library alone to me is still worth it. Um, I know that they poured a lot of stuff to the Switch, but like, I'll play at Mario Maker specifically. It just doesn't work as well on the Switch without having that second screen. So there's still some games that are still best experienced on the Wii U. And you can still play Breath of the Wild too, which uh, is totally worth it. Because they released, that was a dual release between the Wii U and the Switch. I kind of feel like the Wii U really was great, just to be honest with you. I, I, I honestly thought the Wii U was a wonderful system. I mean, yeah, it had its complications, but... um. It was a great system, just bad marketing. You know, I feel like some people, literally people that I talked to did not know that the Wii U was a new system. They thought it was like an add-on. Kind of yeah, it's just, 
you know, there's going to be the people that are outside of the video game community and the tech community that don't follow this stuff closely. They just go to the store and see this item on the shelf. And, you know, if it says Wii, they're like, oh, I already have a Wii at home. They're not going to know that that's a new system. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it just was really bad marketing. But that's part of what I do uh, on my – on Mike text it out. That's part of the goal is just I try to make videos for the in-between audience. Maybe maybe you know something about tech. Maybe you don't. Um, but I feel like I try to explain enough so that people that don't follow it regularly, like, you know, especially my news videos – I try to explain enough so that, um, you know, everybody knows what's going on. I just don't like personally watching the tech video where they just go like 200 miles per hour and just assume that, you know, all this stuff. I think with everything that we do, like, you know, you do acting, um, acting directly, directly, directing. <laughs> <laughs> You've written two books. So there has to be stuff. But I feel like there's always going to be stuff that you're not familiar with, even within that space, because there's definitely stuff like in the tech community that I'm not familiar with. But I hate when I'm trying to find something. And then it's just like they're just explaining it at a level that I don't understand because I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you said that. Um, honestly, I definitely run across that with issue in like film like my big uh thing that i struggle with in film is like audio and it's just mainly because like audio has so many like terms and everything and i'm just like what are you saying (laughs) like (laughs) like it's so it's so crazy but like notoriously on film sets you know the audio team they are usually completely unappreciated um because they're just looked at as oh they're just the audio people but then like now that i'm like doing voiceovers and everything and um i just booked my first job for narrating an audiobook super excited about that but um you know now that i'm switching over into doing like more stuff that involves me to have at least like a novice knowledge about audio I have so much respect for the sound team in film. I'm just like, man, you guys are geniuses. You guys are really doing all the hard work. The crazy thing about audio is like, depending on what you're doing, is the setup for it is like 110% different for each thing that you do. Like for shooting videos, like for this podcast, I have my condenser mic. I have a little um, sound screen out, but I can't use this in the video. I mean, I'm, I am recording myself on video, but I have to record it from a higher angle just because... I have to be over, you know, be able to see me over this big screen thing that I have in front of me. But mm-hmm. like in a normal, like my normal tech video, I can't use this because it's going to be too big and it's going to be in the way. So I have to find another way to get audio. And it's like one of those things that you don't know that's imp- it's important until you have to deal with it. Like nobody is like, <laughs> like nobody goes and watches the movie like that audio was outstanding. <laughs> but they'll definitely, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll definitely know if there's something wrong with it though. Like no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you recently got a bunch of stuff you got you got new apple products you got a new whole new audio setup to do your voice recordings how has that experience been it's been really interesting because um man where do i start i'll start with the one i got first the macbook macbook oh my god super cool so excited um, I will say that some of the excitement, you know, now that I'm almost like a month into having it, is starting to wear down a little bit because I'm like, okay, I love MacBooks, but they do come with, you know, they come with the little complications here and there. Nothing too big, um, just small stuff. I definitely realized that one, this is a laptop. Let me put that disclaimer out there. So, um, and I'm only saying that because of what I'm about to say. Um, you should not run too many things at once, (laughs) (laughs) which is something that I have a problem with because this is technically the first laptop I've ever bought. Everything that, um, I had a laptop that was given to me a few years ago, actually by you was given to me a few years ago, but for the most part, um, I've always owned really good desktops 
and you know on desktops she can run like 60 things at once and they're completely fine but um overall i love having my macbook honestly this thing has become literally my best friend i stopped talking on the phone as much because i have a macbook now i'm just like who needs people when you got a macbook um just kidding i'm not i'm not a sociopath but um yeah and that's good for you <laughs> That wasn't very convincing, but iPhone, my beautiful... Oh, wow. I almost picked the phone up. I'm so glad I didn't. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's bad enough. I started... uh, Disclaimer. Started the recording like two minutes late. Oops. Sorry. Um, The video recording anyway. But, um... Yeah. Like, the iPhone 11 Pro is what I have. And it's the first iPhone I've ever owned. And so whenever I was making the decision to get one, I was like, look, if I'm going to own an iPhone, because I was hearing too many opinions and so many people were just like, oh, I was trying to talk you out of it. I was really trying to get you to get the uh, regular iPhone 11. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, if you were just looking for the camera, I would just say like the 11 is almost as good, except you don't get the telephoto. But I think I just recommend the 11 because personally, I hate the telephoto lens on the iPhone. I think it looks grainy all the time. Like no, like, no matter what the lighting is, like every time I use a telephoto, I'm like, this lens is like the worst. Like, I just don't even like it. Yeah, it looks a, it looks a little bit better than obviously doing a digital zoom on the iPhone 11. But I just think mm-hmm. the telephoto is trash and not worth it. But knowing you, you're probably going to do some light video editing stuff on your phone in which having that OLED screen does make a big difference as far as the color accuracy and you know all that what you're able to see on your phone the generation of people that are kids now or that are like just being born they're probably gonna have no clue like desktop is just gonna be a dinosaur to them (laughs) like it's gonna be something they look at in the history books and be like hey you know we used to have these things called desktops and they're gonna be like oh my god i can't believe you used that i can do that on my phone you know (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of like um you know when we watch those old videos and like the first computer was literally the size of a room and now they're, they're gonna be walking through like a museum like yeah the, the computer used to be like half the size of your desk <laughs> it reminds me of the first time i used dial up and like Luckily, oh, I God. <laughs> luckily I didn't have internet when I was like a small kid. I, I the first time I got internet was when I was like a preteen, and so right around that time was like when high speed internet was one. It was called high speed internet as if it was like something big, but um, there was like it was. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had dial up, so it it really was like mind blowing. I was like, what is this? what it like this is what what this is what people call the internet that was my introduction to the internet and i was so frustrated that like i didn't even want to use it like i would literally only use it to go to like i want to say ign.com but i'm not absolutely sure it was ign and uh game Mm-mm. that had too many pictures up there you should you shouldn't have been up there <laughs> 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 